The peace of the Lord be with you, and good morning. This is our devotion for Tuesday, December 7th, and uh, we will be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. That's our, our epistle lesson for this week, and um, we'll, I'll be getting this out in the morning, so we'll follow the morning order, page 295 in the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, your, o Lord you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. This is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or any, by any human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself, for I am not aware of anything against myself, and I am not thereby acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore do not pronounce judgment before, before the time, before the Lord comes, who will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness, and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Then each one will receive his commendation from God. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you um, will come again in glory, and you will bring judgment, and you will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness. You will disclose the purposes of the heart. We ask that you would grant us, um, grant us hearts that desire your will, that we would be commended by you on the last day. Grant us to be judged by virtue of the forgiveness of our sins and not because of them. Grant us that we would make use in all things of your mysteries, that, uh, that the stewards of those mysteries would be lauded and that we would receive those mysteries with the joy with which you give them to us, that we would have eternal life in you as you live and reign, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. All right, so, you know, one of the things that I'm always trying to, to focus on as I, as I do these devotions is the, the tie of these lessons together as kind of a cohesive unit um, in, in, in the readings for the week. And, and I have to admit, this is one that kind of, I won't say quite baffles me, but I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to, trying to kind of figure it out. You know, we've got, um, we've got Jesus with the, the, the message from John the Baptist asking if he is the one to come or if he, they should look for another. And, uh, and then Jesus talking about the, the office, I guess you could say, that John holds as, as this, the Elijah, the one paving the way for the Lord. And, and then we have this passage, um, you know, well, we can kind of look ahead. We've got, we've got the, the, the passage in Deuteronomy that uh, it'll be for for tomorrow and and that that makes sense with that because you know the, it talks about the prophet who is to come and that prophet is, prophet actually is Jesus right who, who is that one to come uh, so that fits you know John's asking if he's that that one and Deuteronomy pointing to that one who he is um, in the Psalm uh, there's this this um, discussion about salvation that we see in Jesus and and him bringing about redemption and the salvation of the work of God, and we see Jesus performing that. I'll touch on all that again as we go through them, but my point is, those are clear. This one, this is a passage about pastors, right? Um, I, so I guess that you can make this connection that you have Jesus as he's fulfilling the office of the one who is coming, uh, the, the, the Christ. You have John who has his office, um, in, in terms of, um, you know, how he is uh, fulfilling that the, the, the one who paves the way for the Lord, that, that, that Elijah, the eschatological Elijah. Um, so I guess you can speak of the office now that we have that, that brings Christ to us and brings the, the mysteries, the healing of Christ to us. So, so maybe that's, that's kind of where we're going to go with that, I guess, you know. Um, but but as, in, in, nonetheless, as we as we look at this this passage, it's it's good to 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 unpack it a little bit. So let's let's do that as well. Uh, so this is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. And, and now, as Paul is writing, um, you know, you look at look at who he's who who who, who he is with, and um, 
Uh, Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and our brother Sosthenes. Right, so um, this is uh, the note for Sosthenes. This is 1 Corinthians 4 1, by the way. Uh, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 1 1. Uh, Sosthenes is a Corinthian synagogue ruler uh, beaten by the frustrated crowd at Paul's trial. So um, you've got Paul and Sosthenes writing, presumably pastors, so to speak, right? So how should Sosthenes and Paul be regarded? And of course, there's this whole dispute in Corinth about about these super what we kind of call super apostles or something like that. They come in and they're they're trying to take over with all this really really spiritual teaching and and um, and, and so there's this whole dispute. They're regarded very highly, and they're kind of telling it, the Corinthians that they shouldn't regard Paul very highly. So what does Paul say? How should one regard us as servants of Christ? stewards of the mysteries of God. Uh, you know, a steward is one who has care over something. So the pastors, these pastors have care over the mysteries of God. Um, what are those mysteries? Well, on the one hand, you can speak of them as the mysteries of the faith, uh, just uh, the, 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 the duty of, of the proclamation of the word. Um, and, and you can also connect that to the sacraments, right? These are the, 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 the early church had a strong connection between understanding these mysteries and, and, and the sacraments. In fact, I can't recall if that's actually translated as sacramentum there um, in, in the Latin translations. It may or may not be. Um, but but the, uh, there was a strong association there with that, that we are stewards as pastors of, of, of the sacraments uh, because those, those convey that work of, of Christ to us. In any case, uh, moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. Um, it's, it's a duty of a pastor to be to be to be exemplary right to be trustworthy because if if the pastor's life is not exemplary then what he says will be um will be taken with with less regard because why should i trust that guy he's a so-and-so right but with me it's a very small thing that i should be judged by you or any human court in fact i don't even judge myself so you know as the these super apostles are coming and saying you know then don't look at 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 paul as as that special Paul says, well, you, it's not for you to judge me in that way. I, I, Christ is the one, I'm a servant of Christ. He has called me, um, you know, as we heard there. Uh, Paul, an apostle of Christ, you know, sent by the word of, uh, apostle means sent by Christ. And he just, in a sense, I don't care how you think of me. I'm, 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 I, I don't even judge myself. It, it only depends on, on how God thinks of me. For I'm not aware of anything against myself, but I'm not thereby acquitted, right? So this is, I think, a, an understanding of, of, of the guilt that we all have in sin. He says, basically, I don't know of anything in particular that I'm doing wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be faithful and repentant and whatnot, but, um, but, but it's the Lord who judges me. So therefore, do not pronounce judgment before the time, before the Lord comes, who will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Then, then each one will receive his commendation from God, right? And so, so that's the you know we, we, we look to that that day of of um, of Christ's return. So, um, you know, in, in in looking just before this, right? Paul says, "Let no one boast in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Paulus or Cephas, the word of life, or death, or the present or the future. All are yours. You are Christ, and in, in, in Christ is God's, right? So, um, you know, we don't boast in the things of this world. We 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 boast." We boast in our weakness, as he says elsewhere, and that's in Christ, and that's where we have our, our commendation is in that that judgment and that that um, the, the forgiveness that that's that's ours in Christ, and uh, and so you know uh, that's that's where we rest. We rest in in the in the mercy of of the the mysteries that that um, the mystery of the faith that that Christ is God made flesh, who who died for our sins. Um, you know, so I think that's that's what we, we connect this to to this Christ who who fulfilled these the, this call in the Lord, uh, healing the blind, and uh, giving hearing to the deaf, and and cleansing the lepers and the like, and raising even the dead, who will be us on the last day unless He returns before that day, uh, that we would we would be called to Him, and um, but we are raised in His resurrection and made anew, receiving our commendation from Him then. Thanks be to God. All right, uh, we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. 
He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.